Hi everybody, Waxfraud here, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Let's Play series. As you can see, we are back in the ancient city. There's an iron golem in that house for some reason, and the villagers are making their way all the way over to this ancient city portal. This thing has been entirely reconstructed out of courts, and I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Thank you for watching. Still have some beacons here and there that we need to take down. Now, if you remember from last episode, there is one thing, one obstacle that we could not get past, and that is this giant skulk wall that was holding in a bunch of water. This glass plus all the skulk is holding in a metric gigaton of water back here. We have all of these tunnels constructed. They're connecting all the way out to this portal. They connect all the way over here to the nightclub. We have tunnels that go all the way over here next to the lush cave, and we have tunnels up here that host people's jobs and living sites. So it is safe to say these tunnels are a very important structure in the ancient city, and I think what I'm going to do is start here. We'll block any flow of water with the bed. Let's take some glass out right here, take some glass out right there, and uh, yeah, we're going to actually have to bring a conduit in now that I'm remembering that I can't breathe. Get all this deep slate out, we'll replace it with the bricks and the oak wood and the spruce wood. But first, you know, let's just go home, let's grab that conduit. Of course it's raining. It is always raining in this world. We actually, you know what, we do have a conduit right next to the nether portal right here actually, but this is providing us with ultimate breath while we're getting amethyst from the amethyst farm. It's pretty nice to be able to breathe down in here. So I'm thinking we actually do have a conduit all the way back here by the cleric trading hall that we don't really use for anything. Float on over here by the mud starter house. We haven't been over in this area in a good long while. This conduit right down here, we've been ignoring this guy for months, maybe over a year now. Sorry buddy, I'm gonna take you. Thank you very much. Take the rest of this prismarine with me. Let's take this little guy to his new home. Actually, while we're in the nether, I'm gonna show you. We actually do have a little baby hoglin over here. I've been trying to give him some hugs, but he just will not allow us. We're gonna give him just, you know, just a little bit of time to warm up to us. But if you guys have a good name for this guy, let me know in the comment section down below. Floating back gently to the tunnel. Let's get back in that water now. We probably want to set up the conduit somewhere in the middle over here. So I'm actually, I might just set it up maybe up against this wall for now. Place this guy down here, take you out. That was just in time too, because now I can breathe. I have one bubble left in my breath meter. Put this here, and we'll put this here to close it up. I love the way these look when they're done. Feels like a device that'd be used in outer space. Also, I am never gonna get over how cool these conduits look with the shaders on. Well, now we can see everything a lot more clearly down here. We have the whole tunnel. We're gonna get this guy going first. We have the tower. Let's replace this guy with quartz. This whole building right here, we might need to excavate a little bit of the deep slate, put some kelp down so that we can get some water source blocks, and then replace this building with some quartz, as well as this guy right back here. I don't really see a building right here, but we can always make some new starter houses over in this area. After we get this tunnel done, I think what I'll do is replace all of this skulk with just a little bit of glass. Actually, let's go up here. What is up in here? Well, we found a cave, and uh, let's just, let's get out of here. There's no need to be there. Looks like a little opening right here getting blocked by some campfires. Not too bad. First things first, let's get these bricks replaced up in here. Grab the shears out of here real quick. Let's start taking out all this wool. Thank you very much, Efficiency 5. And let's bring in all the oak wood. These campfires are automatically put out when we lay them down. Got a little bit of kelp growing here right now. I'm actually just going to keep on multiplying it. Let's go down here, smack it out. You go here, and you go over here. On the area that's not covered up by water, under the bricks, we did put the lanterns, and on the chains, we put the end rods, but end rods do not go underwater, so for right now, we're laying some lanterns there, and that right there is a not a source block of water. Let's see if I can grab something from right here and put it right there. Now we have the conduit to be able to see a little bit better, but it is nice to get the lanterns up and running over here, and we can actually go right into the secret entrance that leads right over to this barn. Only these cows and sheep know exactly how to get in back here, but we probably should clean it up. I actually think I think I have some torches on me. I do. Let's lay some back here. I don't know if anything's going to be able to spawn. We have a couple of sensors back here still. This area back here, I don't know if this is technically part of the ancient city, so yeah, we're gonna get the walls lit up. Oh yeah, definitely back here is not part of the ancient city. I'm thinking this is going to be a little bit temporary anyways. We'll probably close this off, but over here actually leads back into the underwater area, and it'd be cool if we submerge this whole area right back here. And this skull back here cannot forget this guy. Actually, you know what? You're coming here with me right now. Right now, this skeleton skull is my most prized possession in the game. Swim back towards the entrance, and we'll start to hang some lanterns up top. Now for the classic stone bricks all the way along the bottom. Mix that up with some regular stone blocks. For the most part, this build is pretty structured, but this right here is the one part that's pretty randomized. Close that up here. Got some Russian water here to close up. Now we just gotta slap some of these stairs down. 
We have a lot of deep slate over here to remove still. And placing down some of these stairs, you're just going to have to waterlog them. Like this guy over here, he needs to get waterlogged too. Sometimes even placing a lantern down will make a water source block go away. Looks like we got one more guy over here to get back. Not looking too bad, except we do have a lantern right here to place, and I believe a lantern right here to place. We have a lot of Russian water still right here, actually. I believe we should probably start taking out more deep slate right here. One by one, all these blocks are just going to be water source blocks as soon as we get all this kelped up. Slowly, this water is actually going to get over and start ruining the terrain, I just realized. Something we're just going to have to deal with, though, as this is too important. A lot of this kelp should be nice and big by the time we're done excavating anyways. Get a couple more over here. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we could start replacing this deep slate with something. We did use a lot of quartz on the portal. The quartz bricks could look good on the floor. Let's, uh, well, let's take out a layer of the floor as we keep on taking out this deep slate over here as well. Let's at least give ourselves a little bit of room before we start putting the floor in. Take all this skulk and random deep slate away from the side of this tower, too. Just gotta shave it all down. All these skulk veins down here making these open air blocks. Let's get all these out of here. Actually, let's just get the rest of all of this skulk. We're gonna end up turning all this into quartz bricks anyways. Let's head back over here real quick and see exactly what we can do. These are looking pearly white, and it's getting me thinking the amethyst tower over here. We could bring it to life. This thing was quartz, but uh, now it could be amethyst. I have a feeling we're going to have to head back to the mason trading hall and get a lot more quartz. Got our emeralds all the way back over here. They're coming in handy. Thank you for the block of quartz, sir. I really do appreciate that. I believe we have enough materials to get it finished. We're in this back hallway getting this done. Redstone be gone. Deep slate be gone. Thank you, guys. That is going to do it for the first floor, though. For the most part, I'm probably going to take a couple layers of the deep slate walls away. But now we have a giant open quartz floor, and all we have to do is start kind of placing some bone meal down, which I do have on me right now. We're going to get some grass and some more kelp around here. This ocean is already coming together. I think what we need to do is, honestly, this big old skulk wall, it's making this place look pretty dark, so we should probably just, let's get it replaced with glass. I already have the first layer here. But we can always get more, and as you can see, actually out here, every time I place glass, a little bit more of the foliage starts to get uh, blown away, so we're going to have to probably come pick more and more up. Take out the skulk, start letting it loose on the land out here, and just build up some glass towers. This right here is going to take a good while, so we're probably going to dedicate the entire glass wall to just the whole Twitch stream. By the way, I mention it every episode, but feel free to stop by any time. It is twitch.tv slash waxfraud. We do stream every single day, so stop by any time. Almost at the top, or at least where we want the top of the glass to be here for this aquarium, but we gotta get this cobblestone and this obsidian out of the way. This obsidian actually came from where this lava lake used to be. If you remember from the last episode, we had a huge lava lake that we needed to take out that was kind of hovering right over the portal. This whole area right here used to be lava. We took it all out with sand. We also mined a bunch of obsidian. Back home, we have a barrel filled with about 27 stacks of obsidian, so we are set. But here's the ancient city. This over here used to be all the lava. Over here actually used to be where all that water was. We took all the water out and then excavated this area down here, but we kind of forgot to excavate all of the deep slate after we took the lava out. And that's important because uh, actually if we take a step down, it's very much so in the way. Like this thing is just covering up pretty much everything. It actually goes up into a little bit of what used to be one of the buildings right here. Yeah, there's some deep slate right here. Cut through some of the foliage. We have a giant glass wall. And the only thing that's covering up is that tough deep slate and skulk mixture where that lava used to be. And if we go over here, there's a little bit of skulk and deep slate still messing up the side. So I am going to hop over, let's uh, let's get the skulk out up here, and let's just start draining it out. It's going to be real nice once we can start to see from everywhere in the aquarium. We actually have a little bit of glass over here that we need to replace too. Still going to have to dig into this wall just a little bit, because the glass barrier is going to have to reach over here as well. Walking through the halls of the portal over here, and we can finally see we have a big open glass wall. Probably need to start hanging some glow berries over here because if you turn around the rest... Ooh, look at that sunset, by the way. But we have glow berries pretty much everywhere except for right here. So we should probably fly around and start getting these hung up a little bit. One, two, three, four, pretty much, you know what, all the way across next to this aquarium will do. Now we can float on over here and start bone mealing these guys up. Bing, bang, boom, and bop. That already helps a little bit, but uh, we're going to end up putting a lot more. I can't believe all of this was water and all of this over here was lava. 
But it was worth taking all of that out because now we can swim in here and take a step back, turn around, and we have a giant open glass wall. I guess except for this little bit of deep slate right here, we could excavate that still. We just have to be meticulous about it because the water just needs to be able to create the water source blocks under this deep slate. But I don't want to dig too far in. We just want to do one row at a time. I'll probably get this done on a couple more Twitch streams. Something I am curious about, though, is if we place the leaves underwater. Oh, okay, cool. I was wondering if they were going to be filled with air, but it looks like they are underwater just fine couple things to fix on the bridge here let's uh let's fill this with water and then let's swim outside right here i kind of want to replace this brick stair with just a little bit of glass put one on the other side and now the glass wall is complete put in some signs on the glass here so we can get in and out without any water spilling and down here we still have some water so let's get some signs up on the glass this is going to stop any flow of water here and we should be able to actually just break the amethyst here here and here now we just have a wall of water this is perfect do the same thing on the right side. Smash through this glass and this amethyst like no one's watching. Now the reason we actually have all of this amethyst on us is because I was planning on using it to replace these deep slate structures. On the outside we did use the quartz and this time we're gonna use the amethyst. First I guess let's get all this wool out of here. I guess we have a lot of candles we should get out of here as well. Still in the back of my head I am just hoping that there's no shriekers hiding out in some cave wall. That would be awful if the warden just came out while we were building the aquarium. Alright let's try taking this guy down piece by piece. We're gonna replace him with some amethyst. Maybe actually we could use some purple terracotta and some purple concrete as well. Hearing this amethyst is going to sound so musical. And regarding the comments in the last video, a lot of people mentioned that they would like to see this turned into a dolphin sanctuary, but after thinking about it for a while, I'm just, I don't really know how I would get any dolphins down here. I'm, I'm just kind of confused as to how I would do that. So right now I'm kind of torn between bringing some axolotls in or the tropical fish down, a bunch of different types of tropical fish, because you can't really have both, so you gotta have one or the other. We already have an axolotl sanctuary, and we do have the axolotl dance floor, so probably gathering a bunch of tropical fish would be the more unique thing to do right now. Covering this thing with amethyst from top to bottom actually turned out to not be too bad. We can swim all the way around. I actually excavated a little bit back here as well, so we can get a wall put up. Trying to get this to look as flat as possible, and now I kind of have it in my head to get the rest of this deep slate out so we can make it a perfect square. But that's for another time. I kind of want to focus on a little bit more of this detailing. We have a lot of the glowstone for just a little bit of light here, but if we take out some of this amethyst layering, we can start to add the purple concrete powder, purple terracotta. I actually have some blue terracotta too, because I kind of think that looks closer to purple than the actual purple terracotta itself. But the concrete powder will turn directly into concrete as soon as we place it, because we're already underwater. I'm hoping to add a little bit more texture with all these. The glazed purple terracotta could definitely find its way into this build as well. And now to try out a block that we've actually never used before, the purple blocks here. We're gonna use the purple stairs to go up here. So that's not looking too bad, except we are missing some water sources. We'll pick up some water and we'll go over here and clean this right up. Get some stairs going through the middle. Got some more water source blocks to add as always. And in the middle for this little mini warden statue. I think maybe we get some purple slabs going right there. Some stairs going this way. Actually, wait, these are backwards. We'll go right here. Replace all these one by one. Make it start looking a lot cleaner. Now for these towers right here, actually let's just get these out of the way. I did say I was going to make these into some amethyst, but we used most of our amethyst for these little buildings over here. And also I'm thinking that might be just too much amethyst in general. So we're actually going to build this up with quartz again because we do know that the quartz does look nice. Start off with a row of the chiseled quartz. Layer up with some of the bricks. Start taking out these stairs. And of course get these replaced. Place four of the glowstone right here, and before you know it, you have yourself four exquisite brand new quartz towers. I just took this original one and replicated it three more times. I actually brought some deep slate back. Oh, ooh, there's actually a lot more that's still up here to pick up. This has taken a while to excavate, so we're pecking away at it very slowly, but the deep slate actually used to touch the top of this right here, so it took a while for us to get it out, but it's going. Slowly but surely, it will all be gone. We actually got some kelp all the way on the side here, too, to get rid of all the air pockets. We've expanded the quartz floor pretty far. We still have to get this big deep slate wall gone. These pumpkins down here are doomed to be underwater forever. This is where the entrance used to be for that little underwater cave where we found this back here where those final streakers met their fate. Purple block with the glowstone not looking too bad. I gotta figure out how to work with these ears. Swim back between the kelp, get into some open air real quick. I need to grab a bunch of quartz pillars. I have an idea for the wall. Let's just start in the corner up here and work our way down. Pillar all the way back up. Go all the way back down. And we'll probably alternate every other one. Let's go all the way back up. I think it's time to repeat this over and over until we have a complete square. 
This is actually kind of what I wanted to do to the other part of the ancient city, but with spruce logs, I ended up not really having enough time, and I didn't really realize how big the ancient city was before I lit everything up. The ancient city is enormous, and that would have just taken me a month in itself. It is a lot cozier in here, it's a much smaller space, and there's not much room to work with compared to at least outside, so these quartz pillars aren't going to take up too much time. You just need a couple bings, a couple bangs, a couple booms, and a couple bops. And before you know it, you have the left side done with a small amount of deep slate right here to still excavate. The back side, actually, we have all of that excavated. We still have one row of bricks to put down here. Kelp is still growing along this right side, which is done, and we have a small amount, I think just four layers of deep slate to take out. The beacon effect actually doesn't reach that far back here, but it might take longer to just go get it set up and come back here than to just stay here and get this finished. But we have been doing so much excavation, I think we need to give ourselves a just a, just a little bit of a break. I kind of want to get the coral set up. Everything in here for the most part is now just amethyst and quartz, and so I think we could add a lot of color. Let's take a flight home real quick. We actually have a brand new coral reef farm that I want to show you guys. Of course, it's raining. It is always raining. Take a quick nap and let the morning sun rise. We actually have to fly all the way over towards Rainbow Mountain for this farm. It's not every day we get to fly over this guy. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Along the south side here, we actually have in the middle of the warm ocean where all of this actually used to be coral. It is no longer. There we have a bare ocean and a little coral reef farm under what is a starter house design. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream here as well. This was pretty fun. It's a nice cozy place to get and just bone meal everything that we need. We have the amethyst up here that we can bone meal and gather coral with, and the shroom lights down here as well that provide some light. And uh, these two blocks, actually, that's the reason. I don't use a pickaxe or a hoe because they'll easily break with both of those. And so I actually just stick to using my silk touch axe and I gather the coral that way. I could just go search for more coral reefs, but I kind of feel bad just taking out every coral reef like that's anywhere near my house. We already took out this whole ocean, so I feel like this artificial coral reef farm is the way to go. You can actually also go down towards the legs here and just kind of bone meal this up too. Some might say the pillaring is a little bit faster, but I really like them both. And as far as the coral blocks go, I actually don't have too many of those, so I'm going to fly over to the conduit right here. And there you are, buddy, and we can start to take out some of these. I know I just said I feel bad taking out more coral reefs, but this is actually still an extension of the other coral reef that I started taking out, so why not just finish the job? Little bit of mini corals here while we're at it, but I need some pink coral, we need the magenta coral, we got the yellow, blue, and red all the way over here. We need basically everything. Coral reef, I am really sorry, I don't want to destroy it, but we are going to rebuild you. These made like a happier and less squishy noise when I was breaking them. We have so much coral rising above us now. Scoop up everything we possibly can. Got this shulker box getting nice and filled up. Pick up all the straggler blocks here. This should be enough for now. Let's head back to the ancient city and see exactly what we got to work with. Back at what feels like our new home. We've been spending so much time here. Let's, uh, you know what? We could start back in this corner. Let's just lay some of the shulker box right here. Take out all of the colors that we got to work with. And, you know, let's start with the blue right here and just kind of start randomizing it. I love building coral reefs because you can just kind of build them however you want. It's like in real life, I love building aquariums in real life. I don't know if anybody else is like that, but aquariums have always been something that I've been extra fascinated with. And a wrapping around the side, the magenta creeping right through the middle here. Maybe some coming off the glass up here too would be pretty cool. This part's probably going to be the most fun because we can just be as random as we want with all of these designs. And we can just place all these corals wherever we want too. I like the way this pink is just grabbing onto the amethyst structure over here. It's working its way over on top of the conduit as well. Kind of happened by accident, but we have little archways going over here with one of every color right now. I think we need to go back and beef up this blue a little bit. We'll have this coral wrap around this structure. This part right here is, for the most part, just in a straight line. I tried my best not to do that, but sometimes it ends up just happening. It's going to be fun having this blue start to grab onto both of the amethyst structures. Start to wrap around the inside. Want the archway to feel just a little bit more cozy, so we'll have these just weep down a bit. This blue structure over here is pretty much done as well in this corner, and the pillars are pretty much all exposed now. I don't think there's any more deep slate to get, and this is pretty much as high as the ceiling is going to go. I have some glowstone in the corners to make them pop a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to have glowstone in between all of the pillars. I was thinking about doing some diorite walls, but for now, I kind of want to try to finish this yellow. It wraps around all the way over to these towers. Yeah, and right here, it just gets a little skinny, so I want to beef up a little bit more. Start to work the yellow back here just a little bit into this hallway. We actually have nothing back behind this amethyst structure. We could use some of the bubble coral block. We actually don't have it until that back corner over there. So yeah, let's just use the bubble coral block back here. And away we go. 
all the way back down over here. Go up a little bit again, and then we will go right back down. Maybe we'll slap a little bit more yellow up over here and get it all up on the wall. This whole place is now coral reefed up. We finally have everything done. I have four little red blocks left. Let's get one right here, one over here, and let's get one right here and here. This is definitely the biggest aquarium that I have ever made in Minecraft. This is awesome. I definitely need to get more decorative coral blocks in here, though. Wait, but uh, let's first, let's see... Uh, do we have any more coral blocks in this blue shulker box? We do not. We're good to go. Let's get uh, all the fan blocks going first. One of every color. Let's go. Let's start spamming. This place is getting reefed up. I have a full shulker box of all of these blocks, and I still think I'm not going to have enough. I might have to go back to the warm ocean and get the farm going. Ooh, we got to make this tunnel right here start to look a little bit nicer, too. Something we're probably also going to need to start to make this look a little bit better are some sea pickles. I actually brought some down, but which shulker box are they? There we go. I believe eight stacks will do with groups of four here. I think that's 128 separate light sources. Smack you right there. We'll get you smacked up right here. We'll even swim up here, get you smacked up, and we'll slap you down right here. One thing I definitely need more of are the amethyst clusters. We're going to have to make our way back to the amethyst farm as well. We just need pretty much everything. I'm going to start placing some more sea pickles at the very top. It's kind of nice when they're lit up in the distance. Get the floor and the towers themselves. Got to get some coral up on here. Swimming around looking for a couple spots where the colors could contrast. Like we could put the red on the pink and the yellow. Get the yellow over here on some of the blue parts. Some of the blue parts over here on the pink coral. I think actually all of the spiked coral looks pretty good. Even when it's red on red or we go over here and we got yellow on yellow. It looks pretty nice. Now we can swim around and start spamming some of these amethyst clusters. These are always going to make the coral reef look just a little bit nicer. Plus, the sound of placing these down ain't too bad. Got some waterlogged amethyst. And I also forgot we have all of this waterlogged diorite on the walls. We need to come up here and just start to fill these up. There we go. That is looking a lot nicer. I guess back here, since it used to be a cave, none of these are source blocks except for up high. Got to take these out one by one. And by the way, if you guys are wondering why the resource pack is off, I actually switched to 1.20.4, and actually, Fancy 2.0 is not working with it. It's actually not compatible. But we'll find a workaround for it. For now, we're going to have to go back to the regular hearts and meat sticks there instead of the, uh, the carrots and the skulls. Along the glowstone, we're going to get some kelp going up here so it doesn't blind us. And if we turn around, we're going to get some kelp growing on top of all the coral and on this amethyst structure right here. Now it's time to spam the bone meal. Let's go. Time to make this place nice and grassy. Since there's no green coral blocks, the green grass on all of these just makes them all pop. Just gonna have to keep swimming around, spamming everywhere. Bone meal in near the top over here. We got the top of the towers looking nice and lush, overgrown. And actually up here we do have a little bit of ravine, I just noticed. We could actually cover this up. Grab all these magma blocks from the shulker box. Let's swim right back up. Starting in the corner, this is already looking great. Finish the last couple up here, and wow, we got a mini ravine just completely covered up. Orange strip making the ceiling pop. I think over here, yeah, there's just a little bit of glass that still needed to be placed. I don't know why I forgot to put this here. And of course, we uh, are misplacing blocks. Can't go a single episode without misplacing some blocks. This place already feels like it's so full of life, but actually there's no fish in here whatsoever yet, so we gotta go get some fish. We have about five stacks of buckets right here, so uh, we should be able to get a bunch of them. This guy's fully grown now, by the way. I had no idea that baby hoglins turned into regular hoglins. I thought they stayed baby hoglins forever. Still learning something every single day. All right, let's load up on a bunch of water buckets here, and uh, let's catch as much fish as we possibly can. From what I read, there's 2,700 tropical fish types in this game. I don't know if we're going to collect them all, but uh, we'll start right here. Gotcha, buddy, and gotcha, buddy. These are three dotty backs. Got some more guys right over here. What's up, dudes? We got you. These are nice and colorful. What? Uh, these are chichlids. Ooh, these are nice. What do we got here? These are red-lipped blennies. I love fish names. Some of these are funny. Absolutely zero puffer fish are allowed in the sanctuary. But we'll grab a couple more of these guys right here. What do we got? Goat fish. All right, I'll take some. We should actually get some cod down there too. These guys are pretty cool. What are these? 
blue tangs. Actually, though, I'm going to grab more of these back at the giant glass wall. It actually looks way more interesting now that we have the magma blocks up there and all of the coral up against the glass. But we have a bunch of barrels with a bunch of different types of fish uh, designated for them. And we have a bunch of cod here. We have the Moorish idols. We have the trigger fish queen angel fish over here and the ornate butterfly fish as well as a bunch of other ones but you know what let's start getting in here let's get the cod in there first welcome home everybody you can go here you can go here boom and bam and bam hopefully they all make themselves right at home i have a lot of random fish that i found like the cob and the glitter here also the tomato clown fish but let's start putting them all in here these fish right here are actually beautiful i'm glad i found these two i don't know how rare a lot of these fish are but i'm glad we got them I've never unleashed this many fish in an aquarium. This is crazy. Last few fish to place here. Not too bad. Okay. Ooh, looks like the fish are actually taken home everywhere. We have fish all the way in the back left. We have fish over here all the way in the back right. It's cool how groups of fish will meet together. Some of them are the same and some of them are completely different colors. Okay. Now there is a bunch of life in this aquarium. This is awesome. Everywhere you turn, we have a bunch of fish everywhere. No puffer fish though. They are not allowed. I actually just remembered these deep slate ears back here. I'm going to actually replace them with some diorite walls. This should work. I actually hope it looks good. We have them right here with me right now. And that's not too bad. We didn't, there's no purple walls, so these diorite walls are going to have to do. Well, guys, I think we successfully turned this into an aquarium. We brought an immense amount of coral blocks back, all of the decorative coral blocks with us too. I don't know how many fish we have, but I think there's about 200 to 300 fish now. This place is absolutely enormous. This group of fish right here in particular, the one right up on the ceiling, these guys are really colorful. And this is going to be an awesome place to hang out. I'm probably just going to leave the conduit down here. I'm not going to take it with me so I can actually just come back here anytime. Got this nice walkway here. This is, ah, oh, it just feels so good to be in here now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really do appreciate it. You guys rock. Thank you to all the new YouTube members, all of the Twitch subscribers, and all the Patreon supporters. I really do appreciate the support. Remember guys, take care of yourselves, do something nice for somebody, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye!